Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to the next installation of Quantum Leap Business Show, bringing you ideas, inspirations, and connections. I'm here with Fred Copestake, who's a sales expert and founder of Brindis. Uh, Fred will be talking about selling through partner partnering skills and hybrid selling, and he'll be showing you how to take take your sales game to the next level. Um, so I'd like to hand it over to, to Fred now. Welcome, Fred. Brilliant. No, thank you, John. Um, lot to get through, need to crack on. Yeah. So I think people are just telling me where they are. Um, yeah, cool. Lots of lots of different places. I use this as a bit of a test, actually. So if people say they're in the kitchen, I think, oh, yeah, OK. That gives me a bit of an idea of the kind of audience I've got. But I can see where, see where folk are. Um, right, I can see how I'm set up. So I am going to be putting slides on the screen next to me. So I'm live presenting and using slides at the same time. So if you go to top right hand corner, um, you can click on speak of you and then I go full screen. They haven't got loads of detail on them. That's my job to give stuff around that, but it just keeps us uh, keep, keeps moving. There you go, what a start. Can't believe I've just told people how to use Zoom. It's not like we've not used it a lot. Um, chat, keep putting things in chat. I'll keep trying to keep an eye on there. If, uh, questions come as we're going through. If you pop them straight into chat, I'll probably not catch them as we're doing it. However, uh, Jordan will be having a look at, and uh, my assistant's having a look as well. So I will certainly try to answer those. But I do have a lot to get through. John is an excellent salesperson and somehow managed to get me to weld two presentations together today. So uh, oh yeah, I need to crack on with that one. Um, so yeah, let's get going. Let's get going. So my name's Fred Copestake. I am founder of Brindis, a sales training consultancy. And over the last 22 years, I've been around the world 14 times. I uh, worked in over 36 countries and with over 10,000 salespeople. So I've really had kind of charmed life when it's come to doing this stuff. Um, what I've done though is I, I managed to see that there were certain challenges that many people in sales face, whatever industry, whatever kind of business, whatever country you're working in. Um, and so that's what inspired me to write the book, Selling Through Partnering Skills. Uh, it really addresses some of these challenges and brings us this thoroughly modern way of selling. So what are these challenges? Let's have a look at these first. And you know, what I'll encourage you to do is think about whether any of these are affecting you. Three main challenges. And so you're either going to have one, two or three. And it'll be interesting when I get to the end, if you just pop a number into chat as to so how many of those have you got? Do you get the full strike out or not? Um, so the challenges I talk about are busy, 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 oldie, worldie and a muddled mindset. So busy, busy, busy. This is all about salespeople rushing around, being really busy, lots and lots of stuff going on. They're really active, they're working hard, but more often than not, it's quite wasteful. It's also very tiring. It's all to be doing with unfocused activity. They're not making a difference to get the results that they really want. I mean, yeah, it kind of sounds a bit funny, but it can end up pretty stressful. And we don't want people wasting their time. As business owners as well, we don't want to waste our own time. So busy, 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 certainly some challenges that we'd see. Now, another one that we see is oldie worldy, right? the oldie worldy sweetie shoppy. This is about old fashioned techniques, stuff that doesn't work anymore. The way it manifests itself is that people often be too self-centered. So they talk about themselves, they talk about their product, they talk about their company, talk about services, and all the things that are to do with them, not the customer. They talk about, um, Things which often are too technical for the customer, they get fascinated with getting to this level of detail and they sort of share way too much that just isn't interesting for someone who's looking for results. They're usually through passion, they're usually because people are interested. I can kind of forgive those, but also we see people who get are just using old fashioned techniques. They're using stuff that might have been you know, in vogue once, but really now they don't work. They're not a good way of operating, and I would not encourage that at all. Um, so hopefully nobody on this call is like that. <laughs> Just poor, pure, poor practice. But maybe the self-centered stuff uh, might, might occur. The muddled mindset goes on. And I think this is more of an, uh, an organizational thing where a salesperson is told to be consultative, help customers, serve customers, work on solutions, help them do what it is that they need to do. Great, brilliant, off we go and do that. However, coming on the end of the month, it's actually, can you just go and sell this stuff? And so now the salesperson is thinking, hang on a minute, am I being consultative? Am I being transactional? Am I trying to serve? Am I trying to push? I don't really know what I'm doing here. So it happens at these different levels of um, the organization. Uh, it can come down from management. But I mean, really, it leaves the pure individual who's trying to sell pretty confused. 
So these are the kind of challenges I see. Again, I don't know how many of these uh, you guys might be might be experiencing to some way, shape or form. Uh, good news is we have a solution. We have solutions to these. The stuff that we can do to take these away. So busy, 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 it's about being more effective. Yeah. So here, what we need to do is we need to flip, we need to focus, um, and we need to really concentrate on the process. So it's about being more prepared, preparing to do the things that are going to make a difference. We then need to plan. Good salespeople plan. They plan what they're going to do in the day. They plan what they're going to do in a meeting. They plan what's going to happen in the account. They do this stuff very, very deliberately. Um, and they will follow a process. They'll follow the things that we know work. There are ways in which we can model good sales behavior. The oldie world is where we then start to flip, we start to follow, and we start to focus. So we flip the attention, stop focusing on ourselves, think about what it is the customer is interested in, have a customer focus, look at them, try to understand what they want, what they're all about. That's where the focus of activity should be, what is going to drive them results. And so this is all about having this kind of way of working, which is way more focused on the things that people need uh, as customers. The modeled mindset, this is all about giving people better alignment. So it's all about having a way better clarity in the organization, organization of what it is we're actually trying to do around here. This means that managers can take this on board and then they can then coach. They can coach salespeople to do the right things at the right time. And the salesperson can be confirmed in their own mind that what they're doing is correct. They're not flipping, they're not flapping, they're not trying to change what they do. They're very clear about what it is that's going on. Those broadly are the challenges, they're broadly are the things that we do to get ourselves up to date. And so why do I get involved in this? Okay, so I mean, I've always been involved in sales. My first job was in selling. Um, so it was, it was a family company that, uh, that we had. Um, and when I was eight years old, I was allowed to go and help on the Boxing Day sale. First job was eight. Um, and and though some people might have seen me say before that uh, it was in a Victorian mill. My first job was eight in a Victorian mill because that's where the, the business was based. So Boxing Day, middle of winter, there I was in a Victorian mill, stone cold, because these things are made of big, solid stone. I was dressed up in this massive orange polo shirt. That was the company uniform. And back in the day, these big brown warehouse coats, I had one of those on too. There I was, little friend, eight years old. And I was helping people to choose tiles. I was in the tile store. That's why I was in the coldest part of the whole building. This old Victorian wheel. wheel. It was the wheelhouse in the mill. But I was just having a really good laugh. I was talking to people. I was helping them. I was chatting away. I was helping them put these tiles in the boxes. I was writing a little chit out with my name on it. <laughs> they gave me a bonus at the end of it, which I, which I invested wisely. Yeah, spent it on sweets. Um, but no, I really loved that. It was good fun. You know, so I guess that's where sort of my love affair with sales and the commercial world came from. Um, you know, and it's something that I've always been involved with. Uh, so working in you know, the holiday jobs, they stuck me on the lorries at one stage and delivered fireplaces and things, which I didn't like. Yeah, I far preferred working with, uh, working with people and talking to them. But now it's, it's something I've, I've always been involved with through university and then through all my professional career. I've got a growth mindset. I believe lots of people have a growth mindset and people who have got that I can work with. It's just a terrible admission to make as a trainer, but I struggle with people that don't have this. People are so fixed in the way they want to do something. They don't want to learn. They don't want to move forward. They don't want to get better. I just don't get it. But people who've got a growth mindset as well, we get on like a house on fire and we can really work well. I believe that everybody lives by selling something. I really do. Every profession has got some way, shape or form in selling. Uh, later tonight, I'm getting involved with a, a local university, Nottingham Trent University, where we're doing some stuff for the students because whether they're going to sales or not, they are going to have to sell something and themselves to start with. But everyone, everyone lives by selling something. And I really do believe that. And you know, my, my ambition, my vision, my goal is that we have good people doing good things in a good way with salespeople doing good things for customers in a good way because they're following ways which work really well. However, sales is evolving. Sales is moving. Sales is going at pace. There are some things that people try to do, as I've already intimated, that aren't really helpful. It's, it's not a good way of operating. 
there's some other good stuff that's gone on in the past and we want to capture that, we want to use it. So what I often talk to people about is the evolution of sales, how we can take some of the things that have gone on before and we can use them here and now. Some things we kick to touch. Actually, we kick further than touch. We put it as far away as we possibly can. But if we look at some of the kind of the more recent, I'll go back to the 50s, the more recent evolutions of sales, there's some, some interesting stuff going on and stuff that we can take away. Now, everyone on this call can sort of sense check themselves about what they're doing, when they're doing this, and you know, how they could start to apply that. Because if we look back to the 50s, and again, I, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to this stuff, because I, I love it how these, these things kind of reflect the era. If we look back to the 50s, this was all about rebuilding, it was all about efficiency, it's about effectiveness. And that's what sales is about. This is where sales process became a real focus of sales training, getting people doing the right thing time and time again so they could be more effective. Absolutely, that is something we would use today. Sales process, doing the right things. Cool, let's use that. Let's look at what we could learn from the 60s. And I always think the 60s is this kind of, this era of psychedelia and the mind and this fascination with it or power people thought. And so sales psychology, sales psychology is a big area. And we still use that today. Get people to adapt their approach to be able to do things that, that fit best with the people they're talking to. Why would you not want to communicate in a way which helps people understand you? Definitely want to do that. 70s, benefit selling. Understanding people's unspoken question of what's in it for me. That's what customers are crying out to be told. Yeah. So we, we still today, we talk to people about, you know, sell benefits. You know, the old people don't buy a drill, they buy the hole. Which I always thought was a bit weird. Why do you want a hole? It's actually what you do with a hole, like put a hook on it, put a frame on it to be able to remember something. That's what we're trying to tap into and understand. The 80s. Okay. Interesting era for selling. It's one I struggle to take stuff from because there's a lot of these poor manipulative practices that we, we still get tarred with at the moment. However, even always be closing makes sense because sales is a series of advancements. We're trying to move stuff forward, move the customer forward to where they need to be. And if we understand that and we do that ethically, sensibly, it does make sense. We can take stuff from the 80s. But 90s was our sea change. C for consultative, consultative selling. That's what came through uh, in, in the uh, 90s. The work of Neil Rackham, where they looked at these tens of thousands of sales calls to look at what the best salespeople were doing. And they found that they, they weren't really doing what they were trained to do. They weren't doing this closing stuff. They're asking questions. They're understanding customers. They're understanding their needs. They're helping them realize the impact of doing or not doing things. That is a really solid basis for selling still definitely encourage people to take that kind of questioning and understanding how that works on board. So we build on that and through the 90s, this is when I started to do sales training, you know, in the noughties where we're starting to think about, okay, yeah, we've got to understand need, but also we need to really understand value. We've got to build value. We've got to bring intelligent insight and do things which are going to help people um, help their customers better, help people think. So understanding value, what it means to customers, Big, big part of professional selling today. In the tens, again, this is what I've been training, and I used to talk to people about their sales stature. Have a good sales stature. You want to be the go-to person, somebody that's putting stuff out there and getting a reputation that people would want to work with because you're good at what you do. Now we talk about personal branding, but I talked about sales stature back then. But definitely we're saying, you know, you want to put yourself forward as the person who's going to be able to help uh, and work with people to add value to them. And in the 20s, so the 20s, this for me, it's all about collaborative selling. That's the brand of selling, the type of selling that you'll hear me talk about all the time. Yeah, so we want to collaborate with customers. Yeah, we need to understand their need. We want to add value. We want to then work together to co-create and to build things together that's going to make a difference. So that's the type of selling I talk about. That's why I wrote the book about. Um, and that, I think, if we can tap into that, gives us a really solid way of working. That's what I train, that's what I work people to do. So the mantra I talk about often is think, learn, do. I'll do the thinking for you, I've written the book, put, put the stuff in there. But it's all about learning, yeah, we'll put the message across. But you know, however you take your information, however you learn about selling, for me, it's all about doing. All about the doing, all about the application, about the implementation over the information. And so one of the things that we'll do when we're training people now is get them to think about how can we take the sales stuff that's gone before that's still useful on one hand 
And how can we bring in this element of PQ on the other hand? Now, PQ could be something that's new to you guys. Probably heard of IQ, probably heard of EQ. PQ is like the lesser known cousin, if you want a better way of explaining it. Yeah, so it's not something I've invented. This is something that a guy called Steve Dent back in the late 80s, early 90s started looking at. Uh, and he was working with big organizations who were putting together those big strategic alliances. And those airlines, you know, that's when they start to come together to, to build those whole, whole kind of setups. And they wanted to do this more effectively and commission him to look at this, understand it. Um, and cut a long story short, what he said is organizations don't partner, people do. It's those people skills, it's the partnering skills that if you can help people understand and develop, that will make your alliances better. Now, I came across this PQ and I looked at it and I thought, well, actually, that works for any salesperson. You don't have to be in channel. You don't have to be a partner manager. You're not necessarily building alliances. If any salesperson develops their PQ, that gives them an ethos. It gives them a mindset that's going to help them be more collaborative. That for me is the key to get them up to date or get yourselves up to date. That's what we want to do. We want to understand PQ, we want to measure it. And we can do that because they are skills ultimately. They're stuff that we can learn and we can do very, very deliberately in how we sell. Six elements to PQ. I'll go through these one by one. They work together. So it's not a sequential thing, they work together. I can only speak sequentially though. Um, and when I do go through one by one, I always start with trust. For me, because it just makes sense to start there. It's the foundation for all relationships. Good communication comes from trust. That's what we as salespeople want to build. Build with our customers. We want to do the things we say we're going to do. We want to be credible. We want to be knowledgeable with our information. Um, we want to be sensitive to the stuff that people will be sharing with us. And the biggest thing about building trust is to do things with other people's best intent at heart. It's to have an orientation towards others rather than self. That's one of the biggest trust builders. There's, there's many other ways. There's many things. That's the sort of, I want to give one tip with each of these. And that's the one thing I would say. Do what you say you're going to do, be credible, know your stuff, but more often, do it with other people in mind, do it for them. And this kind of feeds into the next thing, which is having a win-win orientation, a win-win focus, understanding mutual benefit, understanding that both parties have got to come out of this well. This affects how we look at deals, it affects how we negotiate, it affects how we resolve conflict. It's all about understanding the other party, sharing what it is that we're looking for and making sure mutual benefit exists in any given sale. Very closely related to number three, which is having this sense of interdependence. Come from with interdependence. The independent lone wolf salesperson is, doesn't work. It's not good. You need to be interdependent. Firstly, as a salesperson, my success depends on the customer's success. That is a starting point. But now think about sales and the complexity of a modern sale. I need my team to help me. They've got to be looking for the same success. The customer's team, we're all in this together. And people that understand interdependence will be able to work more collaboratively together. Sales is a team sport. Business is a team sport. It makes a lot of sense in how we would operate today. Number four. Self-disclosure and feedback. We probably talk about transparency now. Steve Dent talked about self-disclosure and feedback because that is, for me, what makes up transparency. It's giving information about myself. I can't expect customers to be mind readers. But also, it's about giving them feedback about themselves, helping people understand their blind spots. Sometimes it's about challenging the customer. It's letting them know that if like, we've agreed to do something together, but they're not doing their part of the bargain. We've got to say so. A lot of salespeople often say, oh, no, you can't talk to customers like that. No, no, we have to, must do. It's our job. It's what a professional salesperson does. So th this, this sense of transparency is going to help in the way that we collaborate. As is being comfortable with change. Salespeople are change agents. Now we, we often try to get people to do things differently. We've got to understand what that's like for people, help them to do that. So we've got to be comfortable with change ourselves. Understanding what a change curve looks like, the way that people go through change, how they experience it. Really important to recognize customers are working and thinking in that way, and we've got to do the right thing for them at that time. Help them get through that uh, effectively. And the sixth element that Steve then identified was having a future orientation, knowing where we're going, what it is we're trying to achieve, what goals have we got together with the customer? How can we work on those together? How do we make decisions 
based on this is where we're going, this is where we want to end up. All of these key elements in the way a modern salesperson thinks about how they do things. We get people to help them to do this, they will become more effective. And as I say, we can measure this stuff and we can help people to develop just that, get better at partnering. However, what we want to do is we want to bring that into the way that people sell. We want to kind of bring that together. The PQ, the sales, bring that together. And so I use the value framework for that. So again, I'm going to go through very, very broadly, a tip for each of these elements and give you the framework for how we can literally do that as a salesperson, as a business owner. This stuff and understanding and having a framework helps with the steep learning curve. Steep learning curves are ace. They're really good. I always smile when people go, oh, it's a bit of a steep learning curve. Well, it's a good thing. It means you're getting to the level of performance that you want faster. <laughs> Probably smoother as well. Okay, we want that. So this helps with a steep learning curve. And so what the value framework does, it just gets us thinking about each of these elements. So the first is V for validate. Validate the kind of customer we want to work with. In old fashioned sales terminology, we talk about qualification. Do they qualify for my time and effort? Also, those are kind of quite uh, quantitative areas. We also want to look on the psychological level as to you know, do these people, are they able to work with us? It takes two to tango, springs to mind. So think about, you know, are we going to get you know, reciprocal behavior back so that we can work effectively with people to really make a difference? If we pick the right kind of people we want to work with, the right kind of customers, the right ideal uh, profile, we can then start to do our homework because we need to align what it is that we think we can do with what it is we think they want. So we start to do research. We understand there's more people involved in decision making. We try to identify who they are. We work out what value might mean to them, what are the things that they're trying to achieve. How can we start to bring that to the party so that when we get into the L of leverage, we can leverage that information, have good, intelligent discussion, good, intelligent conversation. We can find ways that we can work together. We can inspire thinking. We can provide insight. We help them think. One of the things I'm really big on with working with salespeople is saying, look, the questions you're asking isn't just so that you understand stuff. You're doing it to help your customer understand stuff. That's the value you can bring. It's the value a modern salesperson brings. Helping people to think giving them different perspectives on stuff, different ways of thinking about things. And that stuff doesn't happen accidentally. You don't make this stuff up. It comes from good, solid prep. Because when we do that, we can start to underpin what our proposal looks like. We can start to put things together. And I think of this like a three-legged stool where we resonate, substantiate, and differentiate. We resonate. We're on the same wavelength as them. We're talking about stuff that's interesting to them. It makes sense for them to do that. We're in harmony. Substantiate means we can back it up, we can prove it. We've got the case studies, references, testimonials. There's lots of stuff that we can say, look, this is why it's gonna work. And differentiate, we're different enough in a way that's relevant to them to be interesting. I have many, many soapboxes that I stand on when I'm training. One of them is that being different is not a differentiator in itself. It has to be relevant to the person that you're talking to. So resonate, substantiate, differentiate. They're the things that would build and underpin our propositions on so that then we can work together and we can start to evolve. We can start to move forward. We can grow the business. Sometimes I, I wonder what's going on in sales because there seems a massive fascination with businesses getting new logos. New, 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 new. So actually, when I were a lad, it was always about building more business with the people you're already selling to. You've kind of done the hard stuff. So we think about, you know, how can we do that? And how can we do that really deliberately? So any way in which we want to, want to operate. So that's how we can bring the sales that's gone on before with the PQ, that, that thinking about you know, how can we partner better, how can we collaborate better to really make a difference for customers. So this is the point where I, I'm going to have to ask a question. Is this you? Is this something that makes sense to you? Is this consistent, is it coherent in the way that you operate? Trainer, can't help myself. I've got to ask that. <laughs> I've got to get people to think about, you know, is this something they can do? It, look, it's not for everyone. It, it, it doesn't matter. Some people will not want to operate it this way, can't operate it this way, fine. Some people will be on board with this and think, brilliant. In which case, 
I'm going to paraphrase. Vanilla ice. I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to change the word slightly. My, my social media manager hated it when I did this. She wouldn't put the slide out. I had, to, I had to post it myself. She wouldn't. When I said stop, listen, and collaborate, she said, no, 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 it's the wrong way around. I went, no, 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 listen to what I'm saying. It's just stop. Just take a moment. Listen to yourself. Listen to what your heart is saying. Is this the right way for you to operate? And if it is, then collaborate. She said, oh, that's lovely, Fred. But I'm still not going to post it because it's wrong. <laughs> it's a funny day. But serious point here, you've got to be thinking about, does this make sense for you? Is it a way in which you can operate? Is it something that you want to do moving forward? If it is, I'm here to help. And I'm, I'm all over this. I, I want to help people as much as possible. Yeah, we've got the book. The book's out there. Have a look at that. Uh, that goes through PQ. It goes through all the elements I've talked to in much more depth. Don't do it so much justice in the, the time I've got. Um, podcast. I record a podcast of the same name. Um, I get people to come on that and we talk about PQ. We talk about those six elements. They talk about how they apply in their way of selling. Yeah, so we've got some real uh, experts from around the world talk to me on that. Sometimes I do a little bit more uh, tactical episodes. So some of the hot topics in sales, like selling on video, creating content, uh, using mutual action plans. I'll get people to talk very specifically about that. It makes a good, good extra training content for me. Um, but, you know, I want that to be a resource for people. It's a resource. I want to provide a resource. Um, PQ test. We could take a PQ test. Um, if you can't be on LinkedIn, I'll, I'll happily send you a link to a way that you can do that for free. Um, and if reflection, if, if daily thought, the mindset is, is your kind of gig, Rocky AI is a superb resource. It's a superb resource anyway, full stop. Yeah, because it's a good way to get your brain in gear for how you want to operate. Rocky's a, a little conversational AI chatbot um, app who actually does speak now that I clearly personalize far too much. I think of him as a, as a little person because um, I, I talk to Rocky every day, type. Rocky uses AI to ask questions. Normally we ask an AI questions and it gives us an answer like Siri or Alexa. Rocky asks you stuff, you have to answer him back. He makes you think. It's incredible how he does it. And now Rocky, he's read my book. So if you want to take the collaborative selling growth path in there, that's a way to do it very, very easily. It's like having a coach in your pocket, basically. But there's loads of other growth paths. I use this as part of the training and I say to people, look, don't necessarily just do the stuff we're doing. We're doing that in the sessions anyway. If you think that mindset, uh, the, your, your um, purpose is more important, wellness is more important, uh, productivity is more important, all of those are growth paths that Rocky provides. Rocky.ai, great little bit of kit. Um, collaborative selling scorecard. I'm actually going to pop that into chat now, otherwise I will forget. I don't want to do that. This is something where you can um, sign up, but it'll ask you a bunch of quickfire questions, which will then create a report tailored to you. It's got some dynamic content behind it that'll give you more information than I've been talking about. And um, uh, just again, give you give you some extra extra stuff to, to consider. That's all free, um, and it'll give you uh, links to other stuff as well. Uh, I'm trying to pack as much value into people who want to think this way as I possibly can. So, have a look at the scorecard. It's um, based on the book, so a lot of a lot of things in there that'll help you with this way of thinking. Um, connect with me. Talk to me. Uh, Fred Copesteak. I mean, I pretty much <laughs> I've got that as you can imagine as a handle on every platform. Nobody else wanted it, which is cool. Um, so yeah, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn's the main one. Instagram, nice pictures go on there. Uh, and YouTube, I'm starting to really up the game on that, put more stuff in there. Yeah, I am on a mission. I'm being uh, unashamed of it. I want to be the guy that's known to bring partnering skills, PQ, to the way in which we sell. Help people be more collaborate, collaborative. Help them do a sales job more effectively. Help them do it better. I want salespeople to be proud of what they do. There is a stigma attached. It annoys the hell out of me. Um, I don't think we should have it, but we do. I, I'll go back to the stuff I was saying at the beginning. It's about good salespeople doing good things in a good way. That's what we're all about. That's where I normally finish. But like I say, John, John's, John's oh, squeezing the blood out of the stone. And so I want to talk about what else I'm doing to try and help salespeople. And that is putting 
pen to paper sounds very romantic, but of course I did it on a computer. Um, but I've, I've gone with book two. Book two is launched early next year. At 7th of January, we're now looking at the official launch for hybrid selling. Because I wrote my book, it came out in 2019, end of, and we know what happened in 2020. <laughs> yep, <laughs> world changed. Um, well, we can kind of smile about it, but luckily, for, well, luckily, the, the stuff I talked about in uh, selling through partnering skills is still absolutely relevant. But what seemed to happen was that the speed of change and things that we knew were going to happen anyway has just picked up. It's like someone's pressed fast forward on the world and certainly in the world of sales. And so, you know, I, I care about salespeople. I want them to do well. And I, but I do have a concern. I have a concern about, you know, the longevity for some. I start thinking, so there's the Darwinian thing um, about, you know, it's not necessarily the most intelligent or the strongest. It's the people who can adapt the fastest are the ones who are going to survive. Because I do think that some sales jobs are going to go. So what can we do to help people survive? Again, it's about understanding challenges. So, you know, I'm all for understanding challenges. That's my job, you know, to understand challenges, help people deal with them. And we've looked at what are the challenges of change going on. And very broadly, I see these as kind of customer challenges, climate challenges, and change in itself, changing change. So customers, customers are more advanced. They've got more information. There's more things that they can access. And they also have higher expectations. They want more. But paradoxically, they're also more confused. Yeah. There's more going on, which makes the world and their markets and where we operate way more difficult to deal with. The climate of change, look at all the different types of selling. Value-based selling, classic selling, consultative selling, enterprise selling, strategic selling, solution selling, AEs, BDRs, SDRs, VDMs. There's so many different models and types and techniques and things going on that it can get really quite confusing. Yeah. And the technology available. Wow, the technology available. I think there's 8,000 different sales and marketing platforms or pieces of technology that they can use. There's just so much going on. And AI isn't calming down. <laughs> it's not what it does. It grows and grows faster. So there's so many things that are going on that we need to understand. Um, and then change itself, the speed of change, it is just relentless. It's going faster, 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 faster. Reminds me of that scene in Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory where they get in that tunnel and they're rowing and they're going faster and it's speeding up and where they're going and they don't know. And there's a lot sometimes. So we, we need to help salespeople get their head around it. And what, what concerns me is that salespeople who haven't got much of a performance to them, and I'm going to use a drum analogy here, salespeople are kind of like sat tapping on a drum and that's all they've done, might well have got away with that. I don't think there's scope for that in the future. Salespeople are going to need to play the full drum set, they're going to need to play all the bits maybe only a certain piece at a certain time, but they need to play all of this to be effective, to be relevant, to be useful for their customers. We've got, to, we, people in my world, we've got to help people to do this. And that's why I addressed in the book, uh, there's a framework in there, the Evolve framework, they need to evolve, uh, where we take people briefly through that. The Evolve framework, again, very broadly, just to give a bit of a feeling for this, um, I'm assisted by two characters in the book, Harry and Larry. Hybrid Harry, Larry Legacy, uh, two guys who have to dress change, one does it better than the other. Um, and what, what they help us start to understand, and then I take into more depth, is that we need to have the essentials for success. Good, solid sales foundations. It's all very well getting excited about all the spangly stuff that we can do, but if you've not got a solid basis, if you don't know the fundamentals, if you don't know how to conduct meetings, talk to customers, ask questions, do some of these things, it, it's a house built on sand, a recipe for disaster. Then we have virtual selling. Now, some people think hybrid is virtual. I'm saying hybrid is a mixture of all of these things. So virtual selling, this is where, yeah, we've got to be jumping online and we've got to be talking to customers synchronously. So we've got to talk live. We need to be sending stuff asynchronously. So using video, it's underused at the moment. It's only going to get more so, or more used, I mean. Um, we need to think about... Uh, other, other kind of tech, and as I mentioned AI and this whole sort of set of things, which, which we need to understand as part of that. I will also include social selling in that. So using platforms like LinkedIn and some of the other things to communicate because that's other people's preferences. I put that all in that section. Essentials, virtual. We need to understand opportunities. The salesperson who is managing the whole opportunity, bringing the right people in at the right time, 
I, I believe that's the role that a full cycle salesperson is going to go, go into. Like an orchestra conductor, they're going to do all the right things. It involves plotting the, the opportunity, managing the decision-making unit, understanding who's who, working out what the next actions are. It's, it's, it's all project management stuff. As you can see, I believe the salesperson of the future is going to be a pretty accomplished individual. I think it's going to be less people, but they're going to do a way bigger job. So only halfway through. <laughs> We've also got the whole thing that salespeople need to lead. Now, you talk about leading and salespeople in the same sentence, and people get a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not leading them up the garden path. That's 80s. That's gone. That's kicked to touch and way beyond. This is about leading them and guiding them and helping them in their own buying process. Some people are expert. They know what it is they're buying. They know how to buy. We need to align with that, make it as easy as possible for them. Some people will, might be buying things they don't normally buy. So they need the help of a salesperson. And for everybody, VUCA ain't going away. VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Concept that was put forward in the Cold War, um, certainly in the military and secret and special service for areas, because they didn't know who the enemy was anymore. <laughs> it's obvious, the Cold War, but then after that, we don't know. It's been adopted into the world of business, and there are things which a good salesperson can help with around that. The volatility. Salespeople can help customers with vision. They can help them understand where they're going to go, what they need to do. Uncertainty. Salespeople can help with understanding. They can share information. They can ask better questions, generate insight, give perspectives. Complexity. We can help customers with clarity, give them process, give them structure, let them know the steps they're going to need to go through. Ambiguity. Get a good salesperson will be agile, will help customers be agile, respond to things faster. Leading in selling is going to be a whole big part of itself. We still going to need to understand value. It's an area that I think a lot of people talk about don't really know that well what it is and how to do it. We rock up and tell people what value is, as opposed to work out with them what value means to them. That's a whole way of selling in itself. And again, we're going to need that ability to play that particular drum. And finally is evolve or expand. We need to expand. We need to then, as I said, you know, good customer success management, good account management, I think there's self-management to be able to do more with the customers that we're working with and grow the business that way. So for me, that's what hybrid selling looks like. We've got a lot to do. Salespeople are going to become, I think, very accomplished um, operators with all of these elements that they, they need to work with. So it's a big ask, um, but you know, that's, that's, that's the way I believe it's going. Other people might think it's slightly differently, but you know, I've put my money where my mouth is. I've put the stuff into, uh, into print, which will begin next year. Um, missing out on Christmas stockings, I guess, but it just makes more sense for me to New Year, new start. And 7th of December, 7th of January, day after the 6th, which is when in Spain the kings come and they give presents. It's my present to salespeople. Because end of the day, look, I am repetitive, but I... <laughs> I want good salespeople doing good things in a good way. That is what I'm all about. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there, you know, with the Upfront Cope steak to help as many people as I possibly can. That's what I, I want to do. There we go. So, <laughs> cooperative selling and hybrid selling in the same presentation. That's some of my thinking, probably some questions. I'm not going to run away. I don't know if I get chucked off the screen or not. Um, Jordan will tell me that. But you know, if there are questions, I'm very happy to feel to put them in chat, to jump off mute. Happy to field those. And I talk about this stuff all day. So, <laughs> well, I've got a question then. Yeah, uh, it's, a sort of, it's a sort of two part question, but they are kind of related. Um, often salespeople are put into two camps you're kind of hunters and farmers, and then sales. Are often put into two camps a kind of short selling you know selling a, a car a once-off transactional yep. sale versus um a longer sale that tends to lead to an, uh, an established relationship and you know further account management um and the types of sales people tend to gravitate towards the different types of sale for, for you what you're talking about with the kind of um partnership and collaborative uh, model that you're talking about how does that fit in yeah, I mean, it depends on what people are selling. And I think a lot of it depends on the willingness for the customer to want to be helped. 
some customers can just buy stuff. They don't need salespeople. And so sales are kind of push a little bit. And I think that's where uh, hunting is going. Um, yeah, I've always had a bit of a problem with the hunter farmer thing. Uh, what you mean? As I say, <laughs> I, I tend to work in B2B complex sales. So complex, it's a longer sales cycle. It's got more moving parts. It's kind of higher value. Full cycle salespeople who are kind of taking the whole um, the whole responsibility because the the the, A, the AESDR thing doesn't make any sense to me. I have to say, it's just why do you want to be passed around a hot potato? Personal opinion. Um, so, I, going back with the drum analogy, it's like rather than have you play the cymbals and you play the drum bits, it's like well, no, you need to be playing all of those, coordinating it, and then bringing more experts in. So I think it's sort of like the. The farm manager, I suppose, if we're going to go with that with that analogy, where you got the specialists that are doing like you know some crop stuff and some uh, some animal stuff, I guess. <laughs> but as, as, I probably should be a bit clear on, on who really I'm talking to as salespeople. Yeah, and yeah. of course, some people are just going to serve themselves because yeah, technology is there to be able to do that. Hope, hope that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. No oh, thanks. Well, if there are no more questions, then. Uh just like to thank Fred and thanks to everyone that attended uh, for any latecomers Fred's workshop will be available on catch up uh, our next event will be at 2 p.m today we have our dragons den style pitching event where our panels of dragons will be showing you how you can earn a 100,000 pound investment for your business so once again I'd just like to, to thank Fred no pleasure look I took my stuff all day John you know that <laughs> I love it and so hopefully people will, will reach out use 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 the uh Use that link, you know, that will give you extra information. I'll talk to anyone about this. Talk to anyone about it. In fact, tell you what, just before we go, if you connect me on LinkedIn, mention you talked on this, put something about hybrid selling, I'll send you a copy of the book in January when it comes out. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so I realised I've just there you go. fairly fast and there's more to say, and so I will give you that gift for me. Feeling all Christmassy. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, Fred. Thank you very much. No, my pleasure. <laughs>